Well, let's go ahead and dive right into our display base. Um, so what I was initially thinking was just to have a base that had a desert landscape and just have the Ark uh, placed on it with the Roamer and the figures. Uh, I think, though, it would be interesting to add a little bit of a background here and maybe add a dilapidated building here with some dead trees around here and some foliage. So I... Uh, had an old building that I had from a train set, and um, so I decided just to kind of mess with it, rip it apart, <clears throat> and try to paint it uh, to make it look used and worn and um, aged. And I have more work to do on it, but um, I was thinking we could position it right here and maybe put some dead trees uh, around here and some foliage that looks dead around uh, the edges and uh, have our figures positioned so that Samuel is standing next to the uh, Roamer looking on. And then we've got uh, Ruth and the captain about right here with the captain getting ready his jetpack uh, as he gets ready to take off and survey the surrounding area. So uh, what I'm going to do for the earth texture is to use this stuff here from Vallejo. It's very easy to spread and, and I use this stuff on the, uh, with the uh, Stormtrooper uh, figure. And uh, then I have some dead trees here that I got at a local train shop and then I have this stuff here which is uh, stuff you can use for dead foliage and I've got one more thing and that's this stuff here just some dry vines and again it's supposed to represent dead foliage so with all this in combination we should make a pretty interesting display let's go ahead and begin so the first step here is to spread the earth texture which is easily done using a small spatula and at the upper corner there, I left a piece of masking tape in place to mark off where the building will be attached and to keep it free from any of the texture. Next was to attach the trees. First, I drilled a small hole to accommodate the trunk, and then I just used super glue to attach it permanently to the base. So the earth texture material does have some adhesive properties, so while it's wet, you can add more detailing like I'm doing here. So I spread a second layer, and this stuff here that you're seeing I'm sprinkling is some material I got at a local gaming store. It's just some fine dirt with some fine rocks, and I figured it would just add a little more realism to our display base. Alright, so this is how our display base is looking. You can see at the base of the jailhouse now, I've created a bunch of rubble. Uh, the finer brown stuff that you see there is just this here. This is just a coarse ground cover. I just happen to have this on hand. This is the kind of stuff you can find at a train store. And uh, we've got some cork in there that's been painted, and we've got some twigs and pieces of wood. And um, you can see the little bricks there. Those were created by taking a piece of strip styrene and cutting them down to size and just dipping them into red paint. And all this was glued on using clear Elmer's glue. Across from that, we can see some other dead foliage that I showed you there I purchased just to fill in the base of the trees there. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give this some more time to dry. You can see a little dark spot there. That's just water that I accidentally got onto the display base. That just has to dry. So um, this is pretty much done. What I will do to finish this off, however, is just to uh, spray on. It's a fine mist of a tan color just to make it look kind of dusty down there. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on now to the figures. So the figures I'm using for this project now come from this Hasegawa 172 scale US pilot ground crew set. And as such, these figures will be molded with the clothing appropriate for these types of figures. And you can see they all have these outer pockets because uh, they're fatigues. Uh, some of them will have uh, pilot gear as well. So because of this, this uh, type of detailing has to be sanded off to match the type of uniforms that we're going to be needing for our crew here. And so I started with my Dremel and finished off with some sandpaper. So I did want to design a jetpack for our captain here. And so this was scratch built, first using a uh, strip that I cut off a 2.0 millimeter thickness sheet styrene. And then the rest of it was just made up of uh, 1 16th inch rod for the exhaust pipes and uh, a 0.025 inch rod for the handles. The pieces were then trimmed, shaped, and cut accordingly. And you can see here the end product. The striping that you see on the back is just some pin striping that I cut down to fit. 
So here are the completed figures now, and the best one is the captain, uh, mainly because the clothing that was on this figure um, is more form-fitting, or appears to be more form-fitting. Um, he's a security guard, so he didn't have a lot of equipment uh, hooked up to his outfit, and um, I just replaced the head with this helmeted one that you see here. The other two, uh, there are a couple women figures, so I just chose the best out of the two. And the other guy is supposed to represent Samuel, and he's just one of the ground crew that is walking there. Uh, unfortunately, their clothing is a lot heavier, so it doesn't appear as form-fitting as I would like. So, well, what can you do? Uh, they'll just have to suffice for our needs here. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on now to finishing the detailing on the Ark. Okay, so getting into the final stretch here, as we complete the weathering process for the arc, we're going to start off with the tires. First thing I'm going to do is just apply a fine mist of this armor sand, which is a color that closely matches the uh, earth texture and the um, uh, fine dirt that I added onto our display base. And I'm also going to use this Tamiya Weathering Master Kit as well, which has a tan color. And um, then I also am going to apply a fine mist of the same color along the bottom here, the areas that are adjacent to the tires. Obviously, be logical if dust gets kicked up around those areas there. And uh, once that is done, we'll proceed with the application of the decals. So our objective here was to make the bottom of the arc look a little dusty and dirty. So we did this by applying that fine mist of that tan color. As you saw, I had some tape rolled up here and placed along the entire side of the arc. And that's to help us achieve this feathered appearance that we have versus something that's well delineated. So I think that worked out pretty well. I'm not sure you can tell in this lighting, but uh, I think I... Uh, I got what I was looking for there. And uh, it worked out well with the tires also. And I'm going to enhance this look now with the Tamiya weathering kit, particularly with the tires. The airbrush that I used for this was this one here by Badger. It's a Renegade. And I usually use my Patriot 105 for most of my work. Uh, but this one helps to achieve some of this finer detailing here. And uh, I also used a lower uh, PSI for the application. So the Tamiya weathering kit now is going to help us achieve a bit more buildup of dirt and grime along the edges of the tire and along the edges here as well. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and just gently apply it here on the edge. Don't need to go overboard with it. And I'll seal this now with a dull coat. So I'm going to use some of this stuff along the arc as well, anywhere where I think dust would accumulate the most, so along the rims here. These sharp corners, particularly the back, there are two sets of tires back here, so there should be a lot of dust accumulation there, and certainly along the front. Okay, so just excuse the noise in the background, it's just the washer going on, but uh, listen, I just wanted to show you the decal sheet that I designed for this. Uh, so Chris did not have a decal sheet set up for the ARC, and there's just too many markings to have to either paint on or try to make decals for yourself, so um, I worked on creating one and um, sent it off to Chris, and he will be including now these in the kit. Yours might look a little different. I've been waiting for his to arrive by mail, and I just um, couldn't wait any longer. These were printed up by my friend Mark Fraley on his laser printer. Uh, so it should look something like this. Uh, I will show you the final decal sheet as I do the final reveal for the model. But it includes all the markings that you see. I was using all the reference pictures to come up with these. And um, so I think you'll be pretty happy. Uh, you can see that they're going on pretty well. And uh, they include all these markings, uh, like the uh, buttons to the door, have the windows to put on here. We've got these dark panels here, as well as all of the um, uh, logos for ARC-2 itself. All right, so I'll keep proceeding on here. It's moving along pretty smooth. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, work on uh, attaching the tires once I'm done here. Uh, but actually, after the application of the decals, I'm going to apply a gloss coat and then a light misting of a dull coat, because I want kind of like a semi-gloss finish here. So, almost done. I will show you the completed project here in just a second. Alright, so here's the completed ARC-2 kit along with the display stand. The kit, again, is produced by Larson's Designs and uh, can be ordered directly from Chris Larson by contacting him on Facebook. Uh, what you have here is a 172 scale representation of the ARC and it measures about 10 inches in length. So let's first take a look at the ARC itself. It's a solid resin kit and the challenge here is not construction but painting and detailing. 
For the most part, I found this to be a fairly clean casting of the arc with only some minor cleanup involved. Uh, the panel lines were a bit light, but this was easily remedied, as you saw in Part 1, by rescribing them. And by the way, if you hadn't seen Part 1 of this bill, I'd encourage you to check it out. Uh, at least check out the trick that I learned about scribing. Um, I think you'll find that um, it's, it's a useful technique, uh, and it'll be helpful not only for this build, but for others too. So if you decide to build this kit, I'd recommend checking out some reference pictures. Those are always helpful to have, and you can find them on, uh, on the internet by just googling ARC2 vehicle. And uh, by doing so, you're going to come across a whole host of decent shots of the filming mock-up. And uh, as you look at those pictures, you're going to start to realize this is not 100% uh, representation of the arc. But uh, if you followed along in part one, you'll see that I did make some easy modifications to help with some of those uh, deficiencies. Um, but if you're like me and are a fan who's been wanting a replica of the arc ever since you were a kid, uh, then I think you'll be willing to overlook some of those shortcomings. Well, I'm very pleased with the way the decals turned out. I think it added to the kit for sure. This model did not include a decal sheet, uh, but everything's been sized to fill in the windows and the R2 logo that you need. And uh, one quick note I did want to make um, towards the aft section, you'll see this red striping. Uh, in this case, this was painted on. It was just due to my impatience. I wasn't willing to wait for the decal sheet, but the sheet will include the red striping that you see here. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the base. Uh, this was a really fun part of the project. Uh, what you see here is a scene that depicts the Ark that's parked next to a broken down jailhouse. Uh, and you can see the crew here getting ready to explore the nearby area. So what we have here are a few figures. Uh, first, we see the captain with his jetpack on, and uh, that is Ruth, uh, who's standing next to him making some final checks. In the meantime, if you look towards the aft section of the Ark, you'll see Samuel, who's pulled out the roamer. And uh, he's heading over to his crewmates just to review his survey plans. In the background, you'll see two characters just peeking out there through the dilapidated jail, and they are just uh, kind of checking out what's happening here with our crew. And what I tried to do here is to try to really just capture the essence of the show. Each week, uh, what they would do is enter a new area and encounter people as they were trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world. And they'd always have these rags and simple clothes on, and that's how I tried to paint these figures. And one quick shot here of the Roamer, which is a 172 scale replica of the little car. I purchased that from Shapeways.com, and it's not cheap. It runs around 24 bucks, but uh, I really wanted to get it. I thought it would make a nice addition to our display. And lastly, I thought you'd guys enjoy a shot here of both the Ark and the Seeker together. As you can see, when they're completed, they really do make some nice displays. Both models, again, available from the same guy, Chris Larson at Larson Design. All right, guys, well, that is a wrap for this project. And as usual, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at anishetlamodeler at gmail.com if you have any questions. Uh, real quickly before I go, I just want to extend another big thank you for all the kind comments that you guys leave. Um, it really is a pleasure to hear from you. This particular project I knew would stir up a lot of fond memories, and it was really fun to share those with you. So thanks again. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you then in the next one. Take care.